Year two of the next gen car has already exposed a lot of issues with NASCAR's newest toys. We've already discussed a lot from a safety aspect, but now it seems that the racing part of it, the one that was glorified last year, is now starting to reveal some problems. Now we're not going to talk about the safety aspect, we're just going to focus on the on-track product. We're going to talk about what the issues are, how do we fix them, and what does the future look like for NASCAR's next gen car. Let's first talk about the good part of the next gen car. Now last year, the greatest part about the next gen car were the intermediates. Following the conclusion of NASCAR's generation six car, there was a lot of unhappy fans around the product of intermediate racetracks. The next gen car fixed that. Some of the best races last year involved intermediates. Darlington, Kansas, the Coca-Cola 600 in my view was one of the best 600s in years. Fontana, Las Vegas, and so on. But that was really the only good thing about the next gen car were on intermediates and the big ovals. Everything else was a bit of a downgrade. Road courses and short tracks, which was the beauty of the Gen 6 car in its final years, unfortunately lost its lust in the first year of the next gen car. This year in 2023, things haven't gotten much better. In fact, it seems as though that maybe even intermediates could take a toll. While last year, both Las Vegas races were extremely entertaining to watch, this year's Vegas race was mundane at best. Now I understand it's just one race. We still have Charlotte, Kansas, a second Vegas race, coming up. But even Fontana, while Fontana last year was very exciting, this year's Fontana race, although still exciting, wasn't as good as it was last year. Well, why is that? Teams are smarter, simply. Teams with one year under the belts on this next-gen car have gotten a better grasp of how to get more speed out of this car. While in the first year of the next-gen car, we saw a lot more off-throttle time, this year, was not as much. Now, as we all know, on the intermediate tracks, more on throttle time is bad for racing. And based on the aftermath of Las Vegas, could be the future of what we could expect to see for intermediates for the remainder of 2023. But it seems as though that the other issues that the next gen car have also haven't really been fixed. NASCAR did unveil a new updated low downforce package to be introduced on road courses and short tracks. While Coda, the first and only so far road course race of 2023, was a lot better than last year, the short tracks still haven't really improved. Phoenix, although slightly better, still didn't make that much of an effect, Richmond was still Richmond, and Martinsville last weekend still didn't offer much of a change. It was better, but by a slim margin. Which is very interesting because when you look at the final years of the Gen 6 car, from 2018 to 2021, the best types of racing were road courses and short tracks. Almost every single road course and short track race outside of Sonoma. Not only that, but also the Super Speedway races in its final three years of existence in the Gen 6 car were also some of the most entertaining and exciting races of the year. While for 2023, in the second year of the next gen car, Super Speedway races, although entertaining, have also been kind of mundane. From a package that we were used to seeing three wide and four wide racing, now all we see is two by two freight trains. While that's good if you're a fan that doesn't like to see wrecks happen every single lap, it does produce a lot of lackluster finishes when drivers can't produce runs and are often stuck in a situation because no one will go with them and they can't make a run if they wanted to. Whereas in the Gen 6 car, you could start in 20th or 25th place and by two or three laps, you could find yourself fighting for the lead. Now, how do you fix some of these changes? Well, if you're Denny Hamlin, it's simple. You got to add horsepower. And the initiative behind this that has come from NASCAR is that, you know, they're trying to get the engine bills lower. For whatever reason, they want the engine bills to be lower. And that's really hurting competition right now. We, we've got to identify that it is hurting our on-track product and is is it worth it to try to get a million dollars less engine bill are you willing to give up you know what we're giving up for our on-track product i just don't think that it's worth it and by the way the the engine bills have not gone down since we were running 900 horsepower they're the same so we just i don't know where we're going and I know I've talked about this before, but I really, 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 really am pleading with NASCAR, who I guarantee you is listening to this. You got to give us some horsepower back or RPM or something to create the passing like we, we need to. Because it's, it's really, it's a challenge and it's taken driver skill sets away. More horsepower, more RPM, and more tire fall off. That is the blueprint, according to Denny Hamlin, to produce better racing, especially on the short tracks and road courses. When NASCAR introduced the next gen car last year, not only did they introduce a lower horsepower, but they also introduced a lower rev level of RPM, 
forcing drivers to shift into fifth gear, especially at tracks like Martinsville. Now the issue with shifting is that shifting allows for drivers to conserve their tires a lot longer than normal. Conserving your tires means less tire fall off. Less tire fall off means there's less comers and goers. Overall, a driver can go out on 40 or 50 lap tires and relatively stay ahead of a driver that's on fresh tires. Not always the case, but it's a lot harder now than in the previous years. But it's very revealing for Denny Hamlin to say that the engine bill for building a 670 horsepower engine compared to a 900 to 950 horsepower engine is relatively the same. If that's the case, then why are we still running 670 horsepower? Everybody knows that with stock car racing, big motor, small blade. And the Gen 6 proved it. Think about this, in 2021, NASCAR had two different types of air packages for its Gen 6 car. On the intermediates and two mod tracks, you had a five 550 horsepower package with a giant blade on the rear end of the car. While for short tracks and road courses, you had 720 horsepower with a small blade. Which races were the most entertaining? That's right, it was the short tracks and the road courses. Now take this one on for size. In 2022, what were the best races in that year? It was intermediates. It's interesting that in 2021 to 2022, the tracks that had more horsepower, 550 to 670, was a lot better than in previous years, while the tracks that got a reduction in horsepower, short tracks and road courses from 720 to 670 didn't do as good. I think the comparison and the proof, according to Denny Hamlin, stating that the engine bill or the cost of producing cars and races is not that different now compared to it was in 2013 and 2014. Now it is true that the idea that producing a 670 horsepower engine compared to a 900 horsepower engine not only would last longer, but it's more cost effective. NASCAR does have rules as to how many engines you can make and how long an engine has to last. So of course, having a smaller engine means it will last longer than a bigger more horsepower type of engine. Now another reason that NASCAR wants to limit the amount of horsepower the teams can have is to also introduce new manufacturers into the sport. While it sounds good on paper, it also doesn't make sense. Think about it, Formula One is an example. Formula One, every single rules relegation is adding more and more horsepower than ever before. Today's cars are the fastest cars ever in F1 history. And what's happening with manufacturers now? more are coming into the sport. Cadillac has rumored to have a heavy presence in the sport if granted access with help from Andretti. Porsche, although no longer lightly, was looking at entering into Formula One and everyone knows that Audi will be entering into Formula One in 2026. And most recently, Ford announcing their return to Formula One. That is three brand new engine manufacturers coming into the sport in a short amount of time. Well, that makes no sense. If costs are higher than ever before, even with the cost cap, why are new engine manufacturers wanting to join the sport, knowing that it's gonna cost a lot of money. It's simple. F1 as a whole is growing. More people are watching F1, especially in America, than ever before. And it does raise the issue, or better words, the disconnect between NASCAR and what manufacturers really want. If NASCAR wants manufacturers to be entered into the sport, if they want to see Honda, if they want to see Dodge, Nissan, or other manufacturers into the sport, well, more people have to be watching the sport. Currently, ratings are going down in 2023. It doesn't matter how much you limit the amount of horsepower, if manufacturers are seeing ratings going down, they're not gonna want to invest in the sport. On the other hand, if NASCAR was producing record-breaking TV ratings and breaking audience records every single weekend, I can guarantee you that manufacturers would be willing to enter into the sport, even if the cost is so high. Again, F1 proves that. F1 is the most expensive motorsport in the world, and yet they have three confirmed new manufacturers joining the sport. They have two new confirmed engine entries joining the sport, with a potential third in Cadillac that could be in the sport down the line. While Formula One is still spending a lot of money and getting new engine manufacturers, while NASCAR is cutting costs and cutting horsepower, yet they're still not having new potential talks with any manufacturers that want to enter into the sport. So if the engine bill is a same, manufacturers still not entering sport even with the low amount of horsepower, and we do know that more horsepower with a small blade is better for racing, why have we made the change yet? It seems as though that it just makes sense. Unless someone can provide an argument for me, it makes no sense for NASCAR to still keep limiting horsepower. Again, if the main goal is to cut costs, well Denny Hamlin is saying that ain't true. If the main goal is to bring in new manufacturers, that ain't true, and F1's proving that it's not true. Or at the very least, going about it this way is not gonna work. But I do offer this for race fans of the sport, and that is the fact that we are under year two of the next gen car. Do I have to remind people how bad the COT was back in 2007, 2008? It was not good. Not only did it look ugly, it didn't race as good. 
It wasn't until the final two or three years of the Generation 5 car, when we got rid of the spoiler and got rid of those braces on the front of the car, was the racing really good. Same thing with the Gen 6 car. The first year, the Gen 6 car wasn't really that good. The Daytona 500 was one of the worst races in its 60 plus year history. The only good thing about the Gen 6 car in 2013 was probably the road courses. Now 2014 with the high horsepower package did help intermediates a lot more. But again, after countless packages, by the end of the Gen 6 era, we found a package that was perfect for road courses, perfect for short tracks, and perfect for super speedways. And that was at the end of an eight year journey with this Gen 6 car. My closing argument for the next gen car is while yes, there are still a lot of issues with this car, it's still only year two. Let's see what happens two, three, four years down the line in the sport. As I've said before, not only are the teams getting smarter, but NASCAR is getting smarter at getting a grasp of how to deal with this new car. I know that there's still a lot of questions and a lot of worrying about how this sport will be the next two or three years with this car. But if you look at the past history wise with how NASCAR dealt with the COT car and the Gen 6 car, it started off bad, but by the end of its tenure, it was a pretty good product. And that's what I'm hoping with this next gen car. But what do you think? What are your thoughts on the current status of NASCAR's next gen car? Are you a fan of it? Are you not? And what are you looking forward to about this car in the future? Until next time, my name is Jet from MBK. Thanks for watching.